In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look and unboxing this here Campbell Hossfield 3 8 inch air ratchet. And this runs off of air, fumatic air. If you don't know what that is, it just means you have to have a tank and a compressor over a battery power. So it's just a cost advantage type thing. I mean, battery power is one thing, but I mean, the longevity versus either or, I feel like air tools have a better and more lifelong span. If you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I definitely enjoy making videos, especially trying out things or going to places or working on my car, whatever, whatever it may be. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. All right, let's get to it. We're going to take a look at this air ratchet, see how it works, try and open it up, and we're going to see if it is actually a holding up to any of its standards. So without further ado, we're going to go and unbox it right now, and then we're going to go outside and see. There's 23 laps left in the Daytona 500 of 2021, but that's not the matter. It is going to be looking at this Campbell House field, and I think I said it wrong. 8 inch drive, pneumatic air ratchet, and it's nothing shy of anything bad. It's just, it says it has a max torque of 50 foot pounds at 90 PSI, so that means you would have to have a higher air compressor to run it for a longer period of time. Anything over about six gallons. Many people don't even read the box. It says it has a 2.5 CFM at 90 PSI and it's recommended with four gallons or larger. Yeah. Now if I look around the box, um, it tells me ways that it works. It's got 10 to 45 working torque foot pounds even though it's got a max torque of 50 foot pounds this is not an impacting air ratchet so it will not be like the earthquake where it goes tl 501 that's the model so it's a tl 501 shows you a picture of what it's supposed to look like the back side shows you the information a little more it just says four gallons are larger and 2.5 cfm as it's noted before it does come with a one-year limited guarantee, but you do have to pay for it, unfortunately. It is made in China. That is, that it is. Now I'm going to open up this 3 8 inch air ratchet. Now, I haven't seen many of these videos for this particular air ratchet, which is why it led me to buy it and try it. It doesn't hurt to try it. Inside the box, after opening it, we see the unit itself. It's just the unit. Okay, let's pull it out. We have the unit, the security tag, which I'll set aside, the box. We have the instruction manual that shows you 3 8 inch air ratchet. Do a description of that, and that's it for this paperwork. For this one, it shows you how you should line it up, uh, what's recommended with it, so nothing too major. And then this one here just tells me ways that it can hurt me, like don't overload as you can break the tool, uh, don't use chrome, stuff like that. Uh, safety information, starting operations, always oil this before you even start it or use it if it's fresh out of the box. Um, unpacking instructions. We need to know how to unpack stuff. Pull it out of the bag here, the protective bag. Oh, it looks like that they have uh, like a a machine oil on here. Only from the production line, this oil is mainly for keeping it from rusting, which means this is made out of steel or some sort of steel alloy that will rust. So keep that in mind. The trigger button here that has little writing on it that says, see owner's manual, wear safety glasses, uh, a 1-800 number for some reason. Like it says a 1-800 number on it. The air ratchet is unpacked and it's open. We see that there is a label here on the back side, and the inlet is at the bottom here with the button trigger. Just a little switch. It definitely is heavier than my blue point. My blue point is a little older. Now, they are identically the same size. I think the light just went out. <laughs> and they just have different materials. One is chrome and one is looks like just powder coated steel or some sort of steel with paint on it. Basic, simple, why change it if it's not broken type thing. Now we're gonna take a chrome socket with the standard cold forge press, I think that's what it's called. It seems to fit nicely on there. Okay, that seems fine. And then now I'm gonna take the 3 8 
seems to hold it just fine. On the contrary, I'll say it's going to shake. I never understood the shake test because each socket is forged differently. So I mean, you could have one socket that fits this extension loosely, or you could have a socket like this one that fits it tightly. I mean, it's all about how the forge is. So I always found that as being not a, a way of testing things. We take the 10 mil fits, 10 mil fits, I actually can't turn that with my hand. I'm gonna go outside sometime and try it out and see how loud it really is. It is cold outside. It says it's 16, uh, a low 14 feels like zero. Oh, sorry, it feels like three. So I thought I'd uh, show you that. So just keep in mind that that's uh, what the temp is. All right, as I just showed you, it is really cold outside. We've got this one here. It's not the blue point, but this is an old Craftsman Air Ratchet that I've had forever. And uh, yeah, if it, my hands don't freeze before I finish, I'm going to put a nut in here and torque it down to about 50 foot-pounds to see if it'll come apart. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah. What you want to do first with these uh, Campbell Hounds Field ratchets or any air tool in general when you buy it is to put oil in the inlet. I'm going to put oil into it first before you even run it. I'm going to grab the air hose, plug it in. Ooh. It's leaking right at the valve. Wow. Because we established that it works, most air ratchets go up to about 50 foot-pounds, 50 or 60 foot-pounds. Some of them ratchet, but because it's so cold outside, I'm going to take this little 12 millimeter bolt and nut, put it inside my vise, and see if I can torque it down to about 50 foot-pounds. Let's grab a 12 millimeter socket and hook it to here. There we go. I know it's chrome. I know you're not supposed to use chrome. It's cold. We've got the ratchet right here. Sticking it on top. Just like this. Air. Let's see if I can remove it at 50 foot pounds. Wowzers. All right. Let's see. I retorque it. I can say that the air ratchet works. I mean, it does work. It's loud as heck, but it does work. This Craftsman Air, uh, this Craftsman Air ratchet is much quieter than the Campbell Hounsfield. Uh, they're about the same size. No, no, the Campbell is much a little bigger. You see that? So, just things to keep in mind. Nothing too much. I've been outside for quite a while now. It is very cold outside. It's like 15 or 16 degrees according to my phone that I showed you. But we did give this a go. It did click at 50 new meters, 50, new, 50 foot pounds. And uh, yeah, it does work. Now, the only reason I got it off at 50 foot pounds was I did give it a little pull. And with an air ratchet, you do usually pull on it a little bit to loosen the fastener up. Now, it doesn't fair way to my my blue point that I have because my blue point is really good and I love this thing but it does work it's insanely loud it does work with a three gallon air tank I will say that because I did plug it into my three gallon air tank I didn't want to turn on my big air tank so I mean why not but between the two I'd still stick with my blue point it's just a different quality I mean it, blue points made for professional use this one's made for like the occasional DIYer and I mean there's nothing wrong with it and for the cost it's definitely worth it then you don't have to wreck your hands spinning a wrench every day you could just go click overall I did try to open this up as well it did not work ratcheting mechanism there is no ratcheting mechanism just want to say that you're not gonna sit there going it's not happening this is a knuckle breaker Classic style. You put it on the fastener, you put it down. Once it hits that point, if you're not paying attention, your hand's going. 
and that's how those work. I mean, that's how this blue point is. It doesn't ratchet at all. Either way, it doesn't ratchet to stop the fastener from going on, and it doesn't ratchet for getting it off. People I see use these incorrectly. They think that it's made to just pull fasteners off. No, this is made to help you once the fastener is broken. Now, as I said, once the fastener is broken loose, most people will use this as a normal ratchet as it's intended to because it is a ratchet, pull down on it and then try the button. If that doesn't work, ratchet, pull down and then hit the button. Don't just sit there hoping that it comes off because when I did it with the 50 foot pounds, of course it's going to come off with that method. I mean, if you're going to be doing it with a other method that is, you know, just sitting there going, it's going to go, you know, you know, as shown before. Is it worth it? I would say so for the budget-minded person. And overall, if you're just starting out as a tech, I'd say that this is good enough for you. I mean, most likely you're going to be moving to electric anyway. I mean, for occasional use, this thing should be fine. All right, as normal, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I do enjoy making videos. And as well, check out my channel content for more. I do have car videos. I have other tool videos. I mean, I don't make a lot of them. Leave a comment, subscribe. I mean, not much to it. All right, stay safe, stay home. Hopefully we can return back to a normal so-called life. I'm gonna go warm up under a nice heater. Oh wait, I've got the radiant heater over there. So I'm just gonna go sit over there and watch television. Yay! Yeah.